Hi, my name is Missy. We're going to do another edition of the for readings. I just feel today like I need to do several of these, so we're going to go with it. Actually, interesting. I think I'm going to do this one like a pick a card. I wanted to do these all separate, and the first one felt totally fine being separate, but I think I think I'm going to do this one as a pick a card. Interesting. Okay. So give me a second. I want to do some let's do some focus cards. So what we're going to do, um, I want to keep the same format. We'll pull some focus cards from my, uh, yeah, today I'm not even able to find any of my boxes, so we're going to forget telling you the names of the decks. I apologize for that. Um, this one is, it's one that I found on Kickstarter, I think. It was a specialty deck somewhere. Um, so anyway, this is going to be, we're going to get some focus for you to choose from for the pick a card from this. And then with each reading, we will do a combination of these decks here. So this one will be the one that's going to tell you the what crystals should you be working with or which crystal energy should you be working with because you don't actually have to have the crystal. You can you know, take a screenshot of, of the crystal card itself and then draw the sigil on anything that you want to bring that energy into. You don't have to spend money. So these will be, we'll find out what crystal energy you need to work with. This, this deck here is going to tell us what it is that's going on in your head, what's happening in reality. It may not always be the same thing. You may be up in your head worried about something and what's happening in your reality is actually something really good, or it could be the other way around. We're going to find out with these readings. So let me go ahead and get some of these cards shuffled. We'll, we will, we will get some focus cards for you to choose from, and then we'll get into each of the readings. I will likely do some charms at the end of each of the readings, and I apologize for the shaking. I can't help that. Um, it's because of the way that the stand is. It sits on top of the table, and uh, every time I shuffle the cards and do anything to the table, it shakes the camera, so I apologize for that. But otherwise, this i got to tell you, a friend of mine made this, and like, Oh my God, this is the best thing ever because I can, I have two cameras that I can switch between. I can slide it from side to side. Anyway, um, so yeah, let me also get into my disclaimer real quick as I'm getting the cards shuffled. So these readings are meant to be timeless in nature or timeless in general in nature. If the details fit, it is meant for you. If they do not fit, please do not try to make them fit. That will do more harm than good and is not my intention. I am not a doctor, lawyer, or accountant. If you need help in any of those areas, please consult a professional. Please do not do anything simply because I suggest it in these readings. You are an adult who has responsibility for your own life, please use that responsibility to your advantage. Okay, give me a couple more shuffles and we will have our focus cards. I'm actually going to move these out of the way. So the, the song that we have playing, in, oh, it's actually 2.34 p.m., exactly right now and the song that we have playing in the background is Memory by Windsor W-I-N-D-S-E-R I've never heard this song before interesting okay so again just in case there's someone else who's never heard it the song is Memory and Windsor is the group Yeah, I have to be careful how I shuffle it, blowing my stuff everywhere, <laughs> shaking the camera. <laughs> okay, we have one which is Aaron Rod. 
Actually, we'll put one right there. I'll move those in just a second so that you can see them better. Oi. Mm. Okay, right, now we have a Elon. Um, I kind of want to take these, but I didn't really want to do five whole readings. Hold on. I guess we're kind of stuck with it, aren't we? <laughs> and actually, no, we're going to do this one. Let's do these four. I, I just don't have space to do all five as much as I would very much like to. I think instead what we're going to do is have these four as our choices. All right, so let me give you a second to get a close-up of each. So this one is Aaron Rod. That will be group one. Group Elon, number two. Rhiannon, group three. The Beloved, Group 4. Okay. Take a minute. Let me see if I can get this good for a thumbnail. There we go. All right. If you want to take a second to choose. And I will be right back with group one. Hello, group one. Let's go ahead and get right into your reading. The first thing that we're going to do is pull some crystal cards to see what are the crystals that you should be working with. And I got I got to be careful how I'm shuffling. I got to remember I have my little extra things here that I felt that I needed for the reading today for the energy and I need to be careful with it because it's very um you know it's it's temporary it's only meant to be there just for the reading (laughs) So immediately we have appetite. So as you can see from the color of that card, appetite can actually come in a number of different colors. 
And I do feel that this is saying, because this came out on its own separately, that this is saying this is the crystal energy that you need to work with, even though these other crystals just came out. Hematite, black coral, and clear quartz. So these three particular crystals here are talking about uh, cleansing, grounding, like literally it's all about light and, you know, balancing your chakras. So quite literally, you need this appetite here um you know you need to carry this with you also as you can see the keyword here for appetite is foresight so more than likely there's some sort of spiritual work that you're doing or trying to do um, that you are going to need to be very aware of your intuition um, and if it's not spiritual work there's something else that's happening right now in your life that you need to really um trust your intuition really follow your intuition and the only way that you can do that in a healthy positive way is by making sure that you are balanced right which is what these three cards are talking about so we'll go ahead and place these here in the center okay so again, if you don't have any, you know, blue, green, or yellow appetite, um, I think it even comes in brown, but I could be wrong about that. Um, no, it comes in orange, green, and blue, and black. Now, black would be very, very good in helping you to cleanse your energy and balance your chakras. But I feel like this is saying the blue appetite would actually be best, even though it's not typically a crystal that I would use. I don't know why this is like, it's still kind of fuzzy, even though I'm trying to get it to... Okay. So um, if you want to take a screenshot of that. So again, I feel like because this is talking about foresight, they want you to use blue appetite, even though blue appetite, sassy, go lay down. Even though blue appetite is not a crystal that I would use for any type of third eye work or intuitive work at all. Um, I would use blue appetite more for like communication. Um, I feel like this is what they want you to use it for. So whatever, however, you, you know more about what's going on in your life. Maybe there's something that you need to communicate and you need to be very intuitive about it because of the person that you're going to be speaking with. Maybe um, you need to be on your toes. It's, it's very possible, especially with the owl in this card. And so I forgot to give you another close-up of your card that you chose. And the owl actually looks a little bit surprised, right? The owl kind of looks shocked in this imagery to me. Um, she doesn't. She looks like she is perfectly comfortable, like she like she's actually dancing. Maybe this is a dance that has been very precisely choreographed on her part. Um, but the owl, which typically represents like wisdom, that owl looks very shocked. But, you know, the other interesting thing to me about this owl is that he is sitting in front of her. So even though he looks shocked, he, he kind of looks shocked as he's looking at me, right? So I don't think she's doing anything to shock this owl. I think there's someone else doing something to shock this owl, and this owl is in some way protecting her. So it, maybe it's, again, this is all tying into your wisdom. Your foresight is going to protect you in some way because maybe someone um, that you need to have a conversation with is, you know, they're going to keep you on your toes, uh, and that's the reason that they really want you to balance yourself. So, you know, when I say balance yourself, this is like meditation. You need to really give yourself time to think about what you want to say. Um, do your research if you need to. If this is like some sort of business situation or something that um, requires you to be on point, right? Um, I would just prepare... 
And this could also be like toxins in your body as well. They could be saying, you know, you definitely need to clear those toxins out of your body to get yourself grounded. And and I also have to bring up with the appetite and the fact that this is hitting me in, or it always, appetite always, I think, is a communication stone. So the way this is hitting me, it could be that maybe you're a channel, right? So um, if you don't know what a channel is, uh, a channel is someone who conveys messages from other realms and so a lot of times people get a little bit confused about how you channel and what a channel is they think only a psychic can be a channel but that's not true you can be a musician and be a channel you can be a writer and be a channel you can write screenplays you know anything creative is channeling painting can be channeling um creating jewelry creating um you know, art in any way can be a form of channeling. So, uh, again, if this is something that applies to you, you may want to think about, like, detoxing your body, uh, balancing your chakras, doing some meditation, maybe Reiki, something. All right, so let's see what's going on in your head. Yeah, see, that one wants to come out, but you see how many cards are there? There's just no way. I'm not reading all that. <laughs> We're going to do like five cards maybe because we don't want these readings to be, you know, several hours. Okay, interesting. So, what, are you like drawing a blank when it comes to your mind? Is it that you, um, okay, there we go. So, what's going on in your head? We've got the, the high priestess immediately. Mm. I'm going to see if any, and then you've got the mother of fire on the bottom of the deck. Okay, so I think this is 100% spiritual. 100% spiritual. And then you've got the, the maiden of earth. Hold on, I'm actually going to read from the bottom of the deck because of the way the cars came out. So I think what we're going to do is... A nine card spread. And you know what? No, we're going to do this different. Give me a second. I feel like it needs to go like this. I don't typically lay out my spreads the traditional way, but because of the way the high priestess fell out, it feels like it needs to be the center card. So I'm going to lay this spread out the way that you would lay out a traditional Lenormand spread. I know you can't see the last few cards, so we'll go ahead and put them like this. So we have the emperor coming out underneath the high priestess with the five of wands coming out underneath the elemental of air and the eight of, of swords. Okay. Interesting. So, and then look, you've got the three of pentacles on the bottom of the deck, and this is like my most favorite three of pentacles ever. Look at the the flowers and how abundant and beautiful all of that looks. It does look very, like, the artistry of it, it does look very, very creative. So again, obviously what you're doing here is very, very creative. But now, up in your head, I have to say, I feel called to this side first. And so I think whatever's going on in your head, you're more worried about what's coming next than you are this stuff here. And I think that that's what they're saying because, um, like, again, when you have the High Priestess as the central card of a nine-card spread, that's saying that is the main um, situation, right? This is the main energy of what's going on. And so this is talking about psychic work, um, wisdom, just like we said with the owl over here. Now, 
this blue deck represents what's in your head at all and you have um, all of this energy up here that's saying look you really need to ground yourself um, before you do this and I, I just want to show you this so in a nine card spread this is the current energy the maiden of earth is what you have on your mind so this is you're wanting to offer something right to the world maybe but what you have control over is yourself right you you can be the leader in this situation and they're saying the best way for you to be a leader in this situation is by balancing yourself detoxing yourself in whatever way I don't know why they're saying that um, other than this energy right here which kind of feels like like if you if you look at these three pictures to me on both ends right they look very relaxed sitting in there she's she's meditating inside of a lotus but this is the eight of swords and the eight of swords is the it, you know the even though she looks very calm here she looks as if she's meditating in this card on the outside right on the inside she's feeling trapped because that's what the eight of swords in traditional tarot that's what the meaning is so this card is saying in the immediate future What's going on in your head is that you feel like you have to keep yourself calm, cool, and collected on the outside while on the inside you're feeling trapped and, and uh, maybe a little bit fearful. And I say fearful because this is the elemental of air. And so this, this is, and she kind of looks like a little bit like she's fighting off something right so there's a little bit of fear attached to it but then over here we have the five of wands and again this is a card where he just looks so relaxed right he just looks like he is the king on his throne and yet the traditional meaning for the five of wands is like fighting arguments competition so i'm wondering if maybe this fear that you have especially that's attached to whatever this is over here we're saying you have to stay calm cool collected you can't let anybody know what's going on on the inside blah 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 right this is saying um it could be attached to a fear of competition and if that's the case like i don't know like i i'm one of those people that I mean, I don't know what business you're in. I don't know how competitive, like, I don't know if there's room for others or not. But like, if this is a spiritual business, I can tell you absolutely there is room for others. You just need to like, um, you know, not worry. But I don't want to like chastise anybody either because, you know, sometimes insecurity is born from a real thing. And so... I mean, I, I should look over here. Look, we have the five of, of pentacles over here. I didn't even think about looking at that. Again, this is a deceptive card, right? You have this waterfall here that looks very abundant, and you've got all of these, um, you know, uh, elves or dwarves surrounding the waterfall. Most people would look at this image and go, oh, how beautiful, how peaceful, how relaxing. I would love to just sit there and watch that waterfall. And yet, if you were in that water, you would feel as if you're drowning. And that's what the meaning of this card is, right? Um, it's lack energy. So maybe maybe there's something where you kind of, you're afraid that this competition is going to take away whatever it is that you have rightfully earned because of these two right here, right? She looks like she's, you know, she's very creative and you know attractive and sexy and all the things over here and she looks happy over here but there's still this energy this is obviously very emotional about feeling you know if someone is feeling emotional about this sense of lack right like they're fearful that whoever this competition is they're going to come in and take away what whatever you've rightfully earned or something i feel like that's what's going on here um and so they're saying um, if you're so afraid that they're going to come in and take away whatever you've rightfully earned, whatever you've rightfully worked for, whatever you've put in the time, effort um, to study and educate yourself on, right? If they're going to come in and take that from you, they're saying, well, hold on, maybe not. I feel like that's what it's saying, like, hold on, maybe not. Like, you have control over yourself over here. And I also, it's just the way that it's hitting me over here, I feel like, you know, um, like it's saying you need to open yourself up to the possibility of maybe collaboration rather than competition. Mm. 
because really that's what well actually no I, I I'm wrong the five of swords is more the energy of somebody coming in and trying to take something in a, in a deceitful manner the five of wands is like friendly competition honest competition so maybe that's what it is like you're you are feeling insecure as if maybe your skills and abilities aren't as good as whoever this person is that you're feeling competitive with and if that's the case, they're saying just ground yourself and, and study. Do, you know, do more, learn more. Don't compare or compete. Like don't compare yourself with others and try to compete because there's no reason to. Like everybody has their own unique expression of self, right? Their own unique expression of soul. It's not about you being in competition with somebody else. Okay, let's see what's really happening here. This one might actually take a few minutes. I don't know if we're going to actually get to the charms on this one. It kind of right now doesn't feel like it, but we'll see how it feels when I get to it. All right. I actually kind of want that one too, just to see. Oh, look at exactly nine cards right there. You can't make this shit up. All right. So I think what I'm going to do, well, I'm going to try to lay them out on top. So we're going to start off with the four of wands, really good energy. So this is energy of like, and you can see it in this particular card. It's like a family coming together to celebrate, right? But in this particular card, you can see they're all coming together to prep for the celebration. So that's actually off to a good start because that's the first card in our spread. And I feel like it's saying maybe the energy surrounding you is people who are truly trying to come together to collaborate, right? So now we have the Knight of Swords. So here's some more like an energy of planning, working, working really hard. You can just see it. Like typically the Knight, the knight of Swords, like this is someone who is a little bit angry and is coming in fast because they're angry and they've got something to say. But you can see from this card that this person here, she doesn't look angry at all. She just looks like she's writing her thoughts down. So maybe there's an, an urgency, like a, a feeling of, I need to get this information put out there quickly. And then we've got the Knight of Wands. So we've got two Knights, two action cards. So this is, this, and this is all, you know, because this is the top row, this is what's on your mind or, um, you know, what you're thinking about, right? So this must be the things that you're actually doing right now. You're, you're kind of getting things set up, ready to go. You're making plans and then you're actually putting it, you know, you're, you're, um, like this is where you're creating, right? It just looks like it's all, all like your thoughts are on all of the steps to create, and then look, this is the energy that's right now. So we have fear energy with the moon. Um, and I have to say with this particular card, because it's the green deck that talks about what, what is happening in your reality, right? What, what can you see, taste, touch, feel, smell? And so you can see there's one wolf up here that's looking back at the moon in a fearful way, but you see this woman sitting in the water. And so I feel like you are, manis you are manifesting fear in the people around you because of, because of your own fear. Like maybe you are saying something to the people around you and it's making them fearful as well. And this is in the recent past, so maybe you might want to think about what it is that you've said or done and to who in the recent past. And then look in the very center card, we have someone praying. This is the judgment card too. So this is, I think, I, so right now it's saying what you have control over right now in the present and what you're doing right now. Um, 
you're like praying for answers, but I think that this is also advice here where it's saying the control that you have in the present, this is like maybe there's a little bit of shadow work that needs to be done there. All right, and then we have the Empress card. Uh, reach out to others, nurture others, because this is coming into the immediate future. So again, you're going to be creating, planning, putting things together, or thinking about how you're going to put things together here. Um, and then here is where you know what you're doing right now is nurturing others, reaching out to others. And then over here, what you have control over, what you had control over in the past was, um, I feel like it's just putting yourself out there. You see the way she's, she's lit up, she's shining, but she's in the center of New York here. But she's shining so bright that people are starting to notice her. So in, you know, what you had control over in the immediate past was that you, you just simply put yourself out there, which was a big thing. And then we have the Justice card coming underneath the Judgment card. So two twos directly underneath each other. Um, so this is, you know, a balance again, which is what we're talking about here. That's what twos directly represent is balance. There could be a decision that you need to make. Um, you know, two paths to take, right? That could be the decision. This is also a card of support and love and relationships as well. But but if you look at her, she looks very satisfied. She's taking her shoes off at the end of the day. So she's, she's put in a lot of good work. And this is also in the very central column um, on the bottom row. So this is what you have control over right now um, is the work that you put in, maybe putting in a lot of hard work and keeping yourself balanced. And then for your outcome, look at, we've got the temperance card. This is like such a positive outcome because it brings in balance, right? And also if you look at it, this is a partnership now where I'm talking about partnerships over here because we have the twos. Um, now in your immediate future, what you have control over is partnership. And you see she's pouring wine for him. So obviously she's hosting him. So maybe you, it's saying, you know, be a little bit more, um, you know, willing to cooperate in your situation, whatever it is, get yourself out of this energy, because obviously this is the energy that you definitely are sitting in. And it could be because you're tired of waiting for this to come in, right? That's what all of these cards are about. I'm tired of waiting for, for my help and support. I don't know. All I know is that I feel like it's saying, with this energy, like, you don't need to fear the competition. Um, you just need to, like, put in, put in, like, your own work and effort and focus on yourself, focus on your own education and your own style and your own thing. Um, don't worry that the competition is going to come in and take something away from you because I don't think that that's actually going to be something that happens, especially not with this. I feel like this is definitely saying if, because the temperance card talks about like healing and bringing balance, which is what this entire reading is about, is about to, to begin with, um, bringing balance in order to have this community, this conversation and where you're able to listen to your intuition in such a way that you can keep this other person on their toes, especially if you feel like they're coming in to steal something from you. But I have to be honest, based on all of this energy, they are not trying to steal anything from you. This is just your fear manifesting itself as competition when there needs to be collaboration instead. 1000% there needs to be collaboration, not competition. You need to reach out and nurture this situation if you want to create something positive and abundant for yourself. Treat that other person like a child with a scraped knee. Give them some love, compassion, and comfort if you want the positive things in your life that you're so afraid someone is going to steal from you. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that here. I hope that helps. If it didn't, please stick around. There might be another reading for you here on the channel that does. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, tell your friends, whatever you can do to help me out because I am new here. And I thank you for watching. Hello, Group Elin. So we're going to go ahead and get straight into your reading. Let me give the cards a quick shuffle before we uh, pull some crystals to see which ones you need to be working with. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to pull some crystals first and then we're going to um, we're going to look at what's going on in your head as opposed to what's happening in your reality. So what's going on for you? And I have to say this card looks a little bit a little bit sad here. She just let me give you another real quick close up. She looks very sad and we do have the snake up here in the corner. So this can be attached to healing, uh, in particular healing of family issues, um, or it could be actual health concerns simply because of the snake being wrapped around the tree. Trees represent either our body or our family. Um, you know, our roots. Are, are, are we on solid ground? Do we have solid roots? Are we healthy, happy, and stable in our lives? And so there's some sort of sadness attached to this where maybe you're feeling as if your life is unstable at the moment. So let's see, you know, what crystals you need to help you with that and why. And so remember, you don't need to actually go out and purchase these crystals. You can just um, take a screenshot of the sigil, or excuse me, of the card, and then draw the sigil anywhere that you want to call that energy into uh, your surroundings, whether that's on a particular item, a piece of paper, or your skin. And you can you can draw it with anything, just so you know. Um, if you're drawing on your skin, you don't even have to use anything that you can see. You can just do it with air and intention. All right, so what are the crystals that you need? Okay, so we have Laramar immediately, and because this came out by itself, I'm going to put it over here. Let me give you a close-up. I feel like this is definitely the stone that you need to be working with. So again, Laramar, if, it can be a little bit pricey um, if you don't have any already, but you would like to work with its energy, you can take a screenshot and then draw this sigil, which is this thing right here in the center. Draw that sigil on anything that you want to bring that energy to. If that is your throat chakra, you can draw that sigil onto your throat chakra. <laughs> um, you can draw it on, you know, a piece of paper, like I said, a book, a tool, anything. And so Laramar is the stone of service, but it is a, it's a water stone. Um, I'm going to see if there's anything else. Okay, interesting. Now we have Hemomorphite, the egoless state. Ah, oh, that's too many. I don't really want to take all of them, but let's see what we have. So we've got Amazonite, Red Jasper, and Lapis. And notice all the blue that keeps coming out. So, um... And we do have, this one talks about the egoless state, this one talks about service, so it could be that you may be needing to sacrifice in some way or take your ego out of a situation. And this one is the one that wanted to pop out. So now we have Moonstone. Okay, so I want you to notice the color combination in all of these cards. We've got this blue and pink. So this is definitely coming through as a need for compassion and maybe unconditional love and then look you have kyanite on the bottom of the deck do you need to have a conversation with someone with boji stone balance align and clear now on the bottom of the deck okay so what's going on? You're feeling sad. You're feeling like the maybe um, with all of these cards, the way that they're coming out, I kind of feel like maybe um, I, 
feel like you need to be of service to someone else and you don't want to. I got to be honest with you. I really, really have to be honest with you. I feel like this is a situation where you are being called to do something, make a sacrifice for someone, something, and you do not want to. Why? Like, I don't understand. It's something... It's something that is going to bring balance and alignment. We do have, okay, so this could be attached to your mother because we do have the moonstone. Um, maybe you need to say something to your mother. Uh, for some people, I feel like maybe, are you trying to write a book about your mother? And you're trying to do it in the most compassionate way possible. You're trying to do it so that because there's something about it that feels like it's going to be of service to others, whatever this, because there's a lot of communication and compassion coming through here. So if this is literally about writing a book or some sort of blog or something that has to do with um, counseling or sharing some sort of information about your mother and her situation in order to help heal others. Uh, that's definitely coming through. But let's see what the cards, I, I don't want to, because I, I am feeling pulled in both directions. So I don't want to say that it's one way or the other yet. It could be a situation where like maybe there's one person watching this that really needs to have compassion for someone else um, and they don't want to. They don't want to reach out. They don't want to put their ego to the side. Um, and then for another person watching, it could be that they would very much like to tell their mother's story and they would like to do it in such a way that feels very, very beautiful. Um, it's like a way to heal um, but also it's healing their mother in whatever it is telling the story, right? Like it would be the, if it was the way that their mother's mother would tell the story without their ego attached, that's how it feels like a healing truth. All right. So let's see what's in your head. And I apologize for those who like to watch me shuffle um, and do the hand over hand to get the cards. As you can see, I'm really running out of room here in my filming space, so I can only do so much like on camera, <laughs> especially without like shaking the table and knocking everything over. So I'm trying. And we got cards that are wanting to jump. They just don't want to fall all the way. All right, we got one. So first we have the elemental of water, which is really good because this is kind of three of cups energy, which is means that there's, you know, in your head, at least there's thoughts of a reconciliation, which is good, uh, especially for those who um, need to uh, reach out in some way. I think we're going to do five cards from each, um, from each deck just to see. So we have the Ten of Swords with the Fool. So um, this is this definitely is a situation where, like, it's saying, like, I don't want to, I don't want to be the one to reach out. I don't want to be the one to reach out. But there's this new beginning. Now the Fool is in the center, right? So we've got this new beginning with the Four of Pentacles. Hold on. Oh, and now Temperance. Okay. So very interesting. So the Four of Pentacles is typically kind of greedy energy. It's like someone who is holding on to something so tightly. They just don't want to let it go, right? They don't want to let it go, don't want to let it go. And that totally matches to all of this up here with this, you know, I don't want to be the one to reach out because I'm still mad. <laughs> That's what this is saying, at least this particular card. And I, I have to say, this is sitting in the immediate future, right? It's like, 
I, I don't want to let it go for balance. I don't want to let it go to bring healing. Uh, because there's all of this, like... Okay, so we can't get over... First of all, you've got all of these fairies in these two cards, right? Except that in this, they're water, they're water fairies or water nymphs, and here they're, they're air nymphs. But in this particular Ten of Swords, she's doing a tarot reading, right? Um, but the cards are facing us. So she's showing us her story or this reading. So, so whoever this person is that's like, I don't want to let my anger go to bring in peace and balance and healing because my ego is so attached and this is why. And here's the proof, right? That's what this card is saying. Here's the proof. Do you see this? It's like someone is saying, do you see this? Can you, can you believe this? Like, uh, would you be the one to like come in and, and, um, you know, be the one to reach out, like, the, look at this ish, right? This bullshit, whatever it is, right? Look at this. Um, but I can't get over all this up here. <laughs> now you've got the emperor on the bottom of the deck. So this is just basically saying, like, and, and also you can't get over these, both of these cards have are air, the cards of Aries, and they're both major arcana. So not only is the energy of Aries the energy of a fresh start or a new beginning. So if you want a fresh start, you have to take the lead and be the leader. You have to take control of the situation, which is the energy of Aries. The Aries can be controlling. Um, they're also spontaneous and a little bit, um, you know, they like to kind of jump or leap before they look, which is the, what the energy of the fool is. That's why they rule the fool card. So again, this could be someone who's just very fiery and doesn't really think before they act, right? And so now they're kind of, they maybe they did something and they have to apologize for it. And they're like, well, I, I don't want to because look at all of this over here. Like this person did X, Y, Z to me in the past. And I don't care if that was in the past. Um, I feel like I should get a pass, a pass for my whatever I did here because I don't want to let it go. And I feel like spirit, well, we're going to get some more cards, but I got to, I got to be honest, spirit is saying you need to let it go. <laughs> like you need to be the bigger person. Um, I, I do have to say with this four of pentacles, like maybe you've are, you're already like, you, especially if you're watching this, right? And you're like, you're like, well, you know, I have been thinking about letting it go. That's the whole reason that I'm watching this reading. Like, why are you giving me a lecture, right? Um, then that's just confirmation that you're on the right track if you're thinking about letting it go and reaching out. Because, you know, I feel like with, I mean, you can't, I mean, look at all of that. You can't get past that. That's like, let's, let's have a loving conversation. Let's hash this out. It's all blue and pink pastels. You know, heart and throat. All right, so one more shuffle and then we'll see. All right. So we're starting off with the strength card. So again, it's coming over this three or this elemental of air, which has the three or excuse me, elemental of water, which has the three of cups energy of like reconciliation. And you could see she's running, right? But this particular card is like, it's saying to have the strength to do the hard thing, right? Like not, not many people actually want to get out and run or get out and exercise. It's, you know, not there, not everyone thinks that it's fun to do that. Right. So sometimes you have to push yourself a little bit. You have to, you have to have the courage and the strength to push harder and keep going and look at her face. She's happy for it. If it'll, if it'll focus, she's happy for it. So it's saying you have to have the courage at least if you if you this is if you want this reconciliation boy well, i didn't mean to do that but okay all right so now we have we have the stars in the reverse coming over the ten of swords 
So this is energy of I, I don't really have hope that we can heal this energy or maybe I don't have hope that this energy has actually, um, it's, that it's actually over. And then look, now we've got the four of wands, um, coming out over the, um, the full card. So this is saying like, I don't really, um, I'm kind of like, there's no reason to celebrate, right? Like, um, I feel like there's no reason to celebrate this new beginning. And then you have the tower in the reverse coming over the four of pentacles, which is actually the tower in the reverse is actually a good card. So when it's in the upright, obviously, as you can see from this, she's shocked. She's getting, there's some sort of news that she's received, which has shocked her to the point that she dropped her, her cup and it broke all over the floor because it's bad news. But if it's in the reverse, like what that means when it's in the reverse is that you already knew this was coming, right? Like you're already prepared for whatever this is. And it's coming out over this four of pentacles. And I feel like what this is saying is literally with this, because you have the, the blue deck talks about what's in your head. The green deck talks about what are you manifesting? And you know, there's a saying that says where your thoughts go, energy flows. So you have to be very conscious about what you're thinking and what you're saying and all of these things, because you're putting energy into something that maybe is negative. And at least in this particular reading, this is what it's saying, especially with this, these cards here, this is saying, I'm not willing to let this go because I already know there's going to be a, a I'm going to get a, you know, an answer that's not what I want, or there's going to be bad news, or it's going to be something that's not what I want to hear. So this is the reason that I'm not willing to let my ego go and reach out to this other person. So we have like fear energy, which comes back to this right here. So we're saying, what are you manifesting? It, it's coming out the gate with advice for you. Be courageous. Let all this go, right? Be courageous. So let's see what your outcome is here. And then we'll get some charms. Okay. And look, you have the judgment card on the bottom of the deck, which is actually a very positive card. Um, and this particular card she's praying so again, I feel like this could be more advice. And then look, you've got the King of Cups. Um, and then look, Knight of Wands. This is all positive energy. Oops. And then the, the Knight of Pentacles. So um, it's all positive energy. And your final outcome card happens to be the Page of Swords. So... Um, and you see there's this picture, this photograph taped to the back of this kite, right? So she's like sending a message to heaven. This is um, literally the outcome is saying, be courageous, send that message, right? Be courageous, reach out, be courageous, um, send the smoke signal, signal if you need to because <laughs> it's a kite like you know what are you going to say it's a kite it's floating up in the air all right and then now we have um did i already point this one out this creative energy um more fire energy aries uh leo sagittarius but again if you cre to create what you want you have to have this energy here um all right so again stop being afraid. You don't actually know what the answer is, even though you think you do. I mean, unless you want to keep up thinking and the way that you are having your mindset the way that it is, because if, if that's the case, then it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. More than likely, you're right. You will, you will get a negative answer rather than a positive re answer or reaction from whoever this person is that you need to reach out to. So I'm going to go ahead and get some charms now. Give me a second. So this may, I'm going to actually do something different. And I don't think um, my friend Santana, who her, she and her husband are the ones that made this um, camera, um, the camera thing for me. I don't think they even knew that I was going to be able to do this, but watch. I'm going to be able to take this down a little bit like this. 
And then we can get some charms. Okay. So we're going to set it at Aries. And the way that I read my charms is similar to a transit reading. So I have this set the way that it would be set for a blank chart. We have the signs and the outer ring. Then we have the planets in this ring here. We have the modalities here, the elements, and the flower of life in the center. So if the charms land in the center, it is a general reading that is meant for everyone. If they fall anywhere in this outer ring, this, that's going to be something that will happen within two weeks to a month. This is going in, on the uh, board itself will be within a week and anything that falls in this outer area is several months to a year. If it falls within a specific sign, that is a special message for that sign. Okay, so we'll go ahead and this these. Okay. I know, I just feel like we need a really good mix. Sorry. I just really want to get in there. Oh, shoot. All right. So to start off with, we have the Made with Love charm. And we have the um, I Was Rune here in the very center. Um, I feel like there's, I feel like there's going to be some sort of movement. I don't know why. I, I just have to be honest. I feel like if there's something stuck, like if you're watching this um, and you're feeling stuck about something, there's going to be movement. Um, and it, it's possibly attached to another person who, who might be like wanting to help you out with something. I don't know. It's just how I feel with whatever this is going on in the, in the center. And even though that's supposed to be a general reading for everyone, it's weird because I actually feel like that might be for someone specific, even though it's a general reading. I don't know how else to explain it. I'm just going to go with it. All right. So we're going to move on for Aries. So now for Aries, you have the question mark and then you have the scissors, which straddles both your house and the house of Pisces. So it could be the that you are questioning whether or not you need to cut a Pisces out of your life. Um, you know, I'm not sure this could be attached to whatever this is here where you're feeling stuck and there could be some sort of movement or something where somebody can't, comes in to try and support you or uh, help you in some way with love. I don't know. Everybody that I'm that gets a charm in their particular house should be, remember that as well. Whatever it is for your situation, there could be, like if it's a situation where you feel stuck, um, there could be somebody who comes in with support, with, su with support, simply because they love you. Some sort of support or help simply because they love you. Again, so if that's how that might play out for Aries, is that you may be questioning whether or not you need to cut a Pisces out of your life. So someone may come in with the answer for you. All right, so now for Taurus. And I have to say, by the way, we have the song Sick Like Me screaming in my head in the background. So this is uh, Sick by Adelita's Way. Okay, so that's for Taurus. I mean, for, excuse me, for Aries, possibly Taurus as well, but um, definitely for Aries. Maybe this could be the question that you have about this Pisces. Like, maybe you guys are both toxic or something and like, I don't know. However that applies, maybe, whatever. So um, for Taurus, you have the charm that says never, never give up. And then you have the number seven domino, which is a six and a one. So the numbers six, one, and seven or 61 could be important for Taurus this week. Um, 
Again, it could be about a situation where, you know, it's encouraging you don't give up. Also, don't it, have faith, like don't give up, have faith. The numbers six, one and seven could be important for you. And again, there could be someone who comes in to help you however you're feeling stuck because again, don't give up and it, it, they do it out of love. So now with Gemini, we have the bat and that is sitting on top of the air element and Gemini has the cross straddling both Gemini and Taurus. So again, if there's some situation um, that you're dealing with a Taurus Gemini, then you're going to want to have faith. Um, now with the bat, I feel like this is saying, listen, especially because it's falling out on top of the air element in your sign. And so, you know, one of the main things about, uh, you know, the behavior of bats is that is echolocation. That's how they navigate the world because they're blind, right? They have to use their ears. And I feel like this is really, really, really important for you right now, Gemini. And whatever it is that you're hearing, you're going to have, you're going to need to have faith about whatever it is that you're hearing. Um, it could be something that you, f you feel totally trapped and stuck by, but again, there might be someone who comes in and, ha and helps you simply because they love you. All right, so now we're going to move on to the sign of cancer. We have the charm that says, I love you. And then we have the number seven domino, which is a five and a two. So the number five, the number two, the number seven, and the number 52 could be important for you. Why won't that? I hate these cameras. Come on. Why won't that? Oh my God, I don't want to get so focused on it, but that's annoying. Okay. So the number seven domino is actually sitting on top of uh, the mountain charm. So there's something, oh, and it, that was sitting on top of the modality, the cardinal modality. So there's a situation that you feel is, um, is going to, there's a situation that you, that you feel, um, is a very difficult situation. Like you're climbing a mountain or like you have to climb a mountain in order for, in order for, um, why won't this, Come on. Why won't this focus now? I messed it up, apparently. Oh, great. Okay, there we go. Um, so whatever this situation is, you feel like you're having to climb a mountain. It's very difficult. The numbers 5, 2, and 7, or 52 can be attached to it. It could be attached to, like, a love situation. And what you're going to need to be very flexible. Also, there's money uh, in within this week attached to the situation. This is the $5 bill, which is interesting because you, that corresponds to the number five. Um, and then you also have the $1 bill sitting here in the outer circle that you can't see. So where there is money coming in because this is sitting in the upright, probably at the end of the week. Or if it's not money, it's some sort of abundance that brings change because this is the $5 bill. I think within a couple of months, there could be some sort of small um, expense where there's abundance coming in at the end of this week. Like within a couple of months, there could be some expense attached to it, whether that's an actual financial expense or this is something that you have to give up in terms of this relationship. And this could be attached to a Leo because the $5 bill is straddling both houses. So now if we move on to Leo, we have the acorn and we have the chair that is actually tipped over. So I think there's somebody that's going to be leaving Leo's life, but it's actually quite abundant for them and it will help them to be very creative because of this acorn falling on top of the fire element. Um, yeah, whoever it is that's leaving Leo's life, it's going to bring a lot of clarity when they do. And it's actually going to bring a lot of abundance for you. It could even be a of money because again, you do have this $5 bill sitting in the outer edge. Um, but whatever the abundance is, it is going to bring change because this is a $5 bill. Okay. And for Virgo, we have the wolf, we have the dolphin, we have the queen, and we have the double two domino. So the numbers 2, 22, and 4 
could be important for you. Um, so I feel like with this wolf here, because wolves run in packs, this wolf is actually howling, um, and the wolf is sitting on top of the mutable um, modality for your sign, which just means that, you know, mutable signs, um, they're, they can be, they, they're, they compromise very easily, like they can change their mind quickly, right? Um, and so if you've changed your mind about something, I feel like you need to let your family know right away um, because it will bring joy. Uh, and I say that because the dolphin fell on top of the Mercury icon on this, in this particular house. And so, you know, that's joyful news, right? Um, and then the queen fell on top of the Virgo, um, the symbol for Virgo, and so I feel like that's saying you are going to be the queen, like you're going to be recognized or something with this. It could be, be due to partnerships or family or security because this is a two, a double two, but it's also a four. Um, yeah. So again, like you may, you may need to either your family is going to tell you about some sort of change, change of mind or something that's going to make you feel joyful and sort of like a queen and like, secure and like you have your you know your your partnership like you're going to feel in the spotlight in some way recognized in some way all right so for libra you have the i choose strength charm um, and the uh, bundle of grapes so uh whatever you're doing right now libra that's you you having you're needing to be patient and you're needing to have strength and courage for with it's going to bring you abundance within the next month like your whatever, I think, especially if you're trying to create something, it'll come in within the next month. Um, but you do have this no matter where charm that is mostly in the Scorpio house, but it is kind of straddling your house. And so, I don't know, like this could be a friend. Maybe you have a friend who's a Scorpio um, who is very reliable because this did fall on top of the fixed um the fixed uh, section of your house. So, and the, and it is saying no matter where, so whoever this person is like, they're very reliable, very stable. And they're kind of making this promise of like, I will always be there. Um, you do have the cross here, which talks about faith. And then we have the, uh, the number two domino that has a two in a blank space. So two and zero could be important for you or the number 20. All right. So for Sagittarius, we have um, we have, uh, the Saturn planet here, and then we have the cat out here. Hold on. So this is talking about like intuition. I actually feel like so it's saying you have this wisdom, right? And this is falling directly on top of fire, the mutable, um, the mutable section, and then the fire um, icon. And so this is like uh, mutable is changeable, right? Like you can, um, you can there, you can compromise easily with with a mutable sign. They change their mind very quickly. Um, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a really bad thing, right? Um, when you have Saturn here, like Saturn is the planet of like lessons sometimes and karma, like, and sometimes those lessons can be difficult. And so having this fall on top of the fire and mutable, um, sections of this house, I feel like you're going to need to use your wisdom in order to like, you're going to have to use your wisdom in order to be flexible and creative in a situation. Um, immediately like when you see this that's going to be the energy that you're in but then further out you're it's going to be called for you to have some intuition like at least a month out so whatever this is that you're working on um you really need to call upon your wisdom and your intuition like stay on your toes with it but i do think there's like again with the general section there's support from somebody coming in just simply because they love you all right so for capricorn you have the charm that says be kind be free be true be peace be brave be strong be happy be thankful be compassionate and then we have the star of david 
We have the Star of David charm here. Um, that came on top of the earth uh, element. And so, um, and, and you also have the dolphin that is straddling both your house and the house of Aquarius. So it's going between the cardinal and fixed um, uh, modalities here. So, interesting. Um, be going between cardinal and fixed is saying, like, you have to be open to compromise, but not so open that you completely change your mind. Um, there's an issue of faith with the Star of David, but this is also balance um, and longevity. Um, and I say that not just because it's the Star of David, but also because it's sitting on top of the earth element. And so there's security attached to that and longevity attached to that as well. But, you know, this is faith long-term faith, right? So maybe there's something going on with your own personal faith where it's going to be called into question and you're going to be, you're going to need to be um, open-minded, but not so open. Like in order to keep the peace or to keep things joyful and happy, you're going to need to be open-minded and a little bit flexible, but not so flexible that you completely change your mind and change your own views. Like, I don't think that's even being called for here. I think it's just being called for to like be loving because you have the maid with love charm that's straddling both houses and then you've got the star that's straddling both houses so this is definitely something going on where Capricorn is either dealing with an Aquarius or maybe dealing with a community at large that maybe doesn't have the same views and you're going to be called upon to be open-minded about this situation um in order to keep the peace and for love because there's something where someone is trying to give you support simply because they love you. Okay, and so for Aquarius, you've got the corn, you've got the I will charm sitting on top of the air element, and then you've got um, the number three domino with the empty space. So number three, the number zero, the number 30, um, and it's all attached to... Um, um, your creativity in some way like maybe this is people coming together because you have the number three here which is typically about like collaboration two people coming together to create something else which is like the third energy where the third energy comes in and so that I feel like that's what this is saying like that could be who this person is like maybe you you're already collaborating with one person but there's a third person who's going to come in to help in some way and I feel like with this this blank space on the domino here I feel like the energy of the blank rune would come into play which means that there's like this endless possibilities attached to whatever this is um, keep an open mind because this is sitting on top of the air element which is all about the mind and communication and thought. And then for Pisces, we have wish, the wish charm sitting on top of the water element. You've got the scissors sitting between yourself and Aries, and then you've got the bellows in the outer ring. So I feel like for Pisces, you're probably thinking about, you know, should I cut off um, communicate or cut off this relationship with this Aries? Um, but I don't think you actually want to, to be honest with you, because you've got the witch charm sitting over the water element, which means what you really want. Like, even if you're saying, oh, get out, get out, I'm over it, I'm done, I'm whatever, like you're angry and you're saying a bunch of angry things, like what you really want is for, for to come back together and to breathe new life into the situation. And because the bellows is sitting in this ring here, I think if you put some effort in, like, that could you very well could breathe some new life into the situation but also on the same front if you don't want to put effort in if you really want to cut an Aries out of your life and you don't know how doing it will make you feel much more abundant and creative and um, active and healthy so there might be two Pisces actually watching this particular reading okay so I hope that helps I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here so that we can move on to group number three Okay. Hello, group three. Let's get a close up of your card. And here's the front. 
This is one of my favorite cards in this deck. I always feel like she's within a sanctuary, even though there are so many thorns on this rose bush. They just feel protective to me. And another interesting thing, if you notice, there's a hand coming up this, her side here, getting ready to caress her. So there's something very sexual, very beautiful, very sensual, but also very peaceful and protective about this particular card. We do have the blue rose with the bird here. So there is like maybe whatever this sanctuary is, this is where she's receiving all of her intuitive messages as well as her, she is fantasizing about what she wants with this hand creeping up her side. So, you know, maybe, maybe she's looking for love, right? We don't know. Maybe, ooh, why did it go out? Ooh, interesting. It went out of focus as soon as I said that and I didn't really move it or anything. So someone had a really strong reaction to that when I said maybe she's looking for love maybe someone was like oh maybe I'm not <laughs> maybe that's why all those thorns are uh, protecting her interesting let's see what's going on first thing we're going to do is see what crystals you need One more, and then we'll get a couple. Okay. Oh, interesting. They came out right away. All right, so we have blue lace agate on the bottom of the deck. Calm expression is the keyword for this card. And, and one thing that I love Blue Lace Agate for is literally being able to speak um, in a calm, peaceful, and gentle way. So um, I'm not sure yet. I, I, want, I feel like I want to put that right there for right now until I just figure out what these cards are. All right, so we have Morganite and Opal, emotional magnification and equality and love. So interesting where we were talking about maybe she's looking for love. The camera went out of focus as if someone is going, no, I'm not. And yet here are the cards saying, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Okay, so I feel like you really need to either wear or use or carry some opal and morganite. And actually, give me another second to get this set up because I'm going to put this blue lace agate over here. I think these are the two crystals that you need to use, and it's to help you um, to be able to express yourself in a calm, um, compassionate manner. And so let me give you a close-up of each of these cards because... Um, purpose of these cards is so that you can take this sigil, which is right here in the very center, and draw it on anything, anywhere, in order to call in the energy of the opal to you or any object that you're working with. So what I mean by that is you can draw this sigil on the inside of your, your palm here. You have chakras here, so if you want to bring in the energy of the opal, you would draw this with your finger. Right? Or you could do it in pen if you want to. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but if that's your thing, go for it. If you've got pen that's not toxic, go for it. You can also draw this on your spiritual tools. You can draw it on a piece of paper. Um, you can draw this anywhere. Okay, So that's the opal. And so the keywords here are emotional magnification. And that's one of the great things about opal. And one of the reasons that opal is one of my all-time favorite stones. I, in fact, anything rainbow or you know that that corresponds to all of the chakras um, is going to be my favorite just simply because of the balance attached to it but not only that look at how beautiful I mean look at the coloring that is just so beautiful literally and that's what you want to do you want to magnify your your beauty right because that's kind of like our emotional state really is our beauty. People tend to think that beauty is our physical appearance, and it's not. It's our soul. It's who we are. It's how how we love ourselves and others, whether that's in a healthy way or a toxic way, right? And so now we have Morganite. So again, this is the sigil right here in the very center that you would want to draw 
on any item. And so Morganite is about equality and love, but for myself especially, I always see Morganite as a stone of like family, family love and unity. There's just something about this pink coloring that reminds me of like babies. I don't know. So, um, but I don't think in this particular reading that this is actually talking about family per se. I feel like this is talking about romance, to be honest with you. Actually, I, I'm not going to keep pulling that forward because I want to have enough room for the rest of the card. So what we're going to do, and I apologize for that getting cut off, but what we're going to do is we're going to get some cards first to see what's going on in your head. Um, uh, you know, especially for this card, I want to I want to find out what's going on in your head about these thorns because I do think there's some fear attached to romance. And then we're going to look at what's happening in the 3D with this particular deck here. And then if we have time, we'll get some charms. So we have uh, Alanis Morissette, Head Over Feet, playing in the background. All right, so we're starting off with the Judgment card immediately. And so this one is an initiation, but it's interesting to me that you see a male and female up here. And they are they look to be in spirit form, and this woman down here looks to be in ritual, right? She's got her candles, she's got her pentacles, she's got her tools. And they're in a circle. She's she's created her protective circle, and it looks as it to be as if she's maybe praying to the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Okay. So we're actually going to get five cards to represent what's going on in your head. And so next, next we have the star card, and this one is actually kind of a dark looking star card, isn't it? I don't know, typically the star card is about hopes and wishes. That's not going to focus too well. Um, she's got her cauldron. So this is a mix of fire and water. There could be, uh, you know, one person could be a fire sign, one person could be a water sign in this relationship. Um, but the star card... Um, it typically, like I said, it talks about like hope, faith, wishes, healing. This one just looks a little bit dark for some reason. I think that's actually too many cards. Hold on a second. Okay, so it looks like that's going to be our central card. All right, and this right here is just too many, so I'm going to put it back and we'll keep going. I'm going to get two more cards. So now we've got the Four of Wands. Let's get one more. We have Incubus, 
uh, with drive playing in the background. And so this is the Ten of Wands. Um, interesting. So typically the Ten of Wands talks about feeling overwhelmed, but look at that. That kind of looks like the Zodiac to me. So maybe this could represent a bunch of other people. Hold on. What is this? Okay. So with the Mother of Earth as the central card, it's possible that, that this, you know, this is representing you and she looks very like she's, yeah, she's older, maybe more mature, right? But she's very well put together. She's very sexy. Um, you know, she's got a, a, an expensive dress going on here. Um, she kind of looks like she's dancing. So this is very positive, fertile, abundant energy, right? So I feel like this is you. So now we have the immediate past or the recent past, which is, you know, there's this, I think, I honestly think there's a prayer. Like maybe you have been praying and hoping for a relationship, but you don't really truly have faith in it. But then over here in the immediate future, right, now all of a sudden you've got the Four of Wands and the Ten of Wands. And so this is like, the Four of Wands is like celebrations and parties, and then the Ten of Wands is feeling overwhelmed. So it's, and look at the way she's dressed up, right? I wonder if this is energy of, like, I, I would really like to date. I would really like to find my person, but I don't really want to go out and date. I don't really want to have to... Um, like there's, it feels like there's a frustration. I'm not going to lie. There's a frustration and a sense of overwhelming when it comes to the actual dating process. So let's see how this is manifesting and then we'll get some charms. Maybe that's why you've got these thorns here. Because this literally, it literally feels like the actual date itself. I don't feel like this is energy of getting on a dating app. I don't feel like this is the energy of going out and meeting people. I think this is the energy of I'm overwhelmed by the actual date itself. Because look at how she's dressed up here. You only get dressed up like that if you're going out on a date, on a special occasion, right? So, um... Why does this actual part of it make you so nervous? Why does the actual date itself, the actual interaction, scare you? Is it because of the conversation? You don't know what to say? That's, that's very, very much a possibility. And if that's the case, like literally your advice here is to carry some opal and morganite with you or wear it or draw it on something um, like, you know, anywhere on your body or something in order to help you to be able to uh, express yourself in a calm way um, so as not to, you know, feel uh, stress or anxiety because nobody wants that in a, on a date, right? That's no fun. <laughs> Seriously, that's no fun. But what are you going to, like, what do you expect on a date with a stranger, too, right? <laughs> Especially if you're attracted to them. You're hoping that they like you, you know. I, but I, I don't know. Well, let's see what the cards say. But I, I even just what I'm feeling right now, I kind of feel like it, yeah. know, the cards are going to say, just be yourself. <laughs> it's easier said than done, though, right? Like, yeah, everybody can say, oh, just be yourself. And then you get into that situation, and it's like, well, what do I say? <laughs> I feel awkward. The energy feels off or whatever. So let's see how this is actually manifesting. Okay, so we've got the tower in the reverse coming out over the initiation. So you were expecting this, right? And and what's what's interesting about the tower in reverse, so when it's in the upright, this is news that is or news or information that comes as a shock. Um, and the tower is not always bad either, just so you know, right? So 
let's get some more cards. But, you know, with judgment, the judgment is like an awakening. And this particular card did say initiation. So it could be that maybe you are awakening to the fact of a particular person as being your person. Um, and you, maybe maybe they're even expressing themselves to you and and you're not shocked by it at all. You're not surprised by it at all. And hold on, we have, um, ooh, undo it. Carrie Underwood, undo it. Okay, hold on. Hold on, this just put a total different spin, and now I understand why it's the actual conversation and everything that makes you, why you need this calm expression. Well, we're going to get some more cards, but at least for somebody, whoever this person is that's coming in to express themselves, you knew that they felt this way, and I, maybe you don't want that. I don't know. We'll see. I, at least I'm. I, at least one person may not want this attention. Um, that's a very real possibility. That could be the reason that those thorns are there. Maybe they don't want this particular person's attention, but they're hoping for someone else's attention. So, hold on. Now we've got more in the reverse. Interesting. So now we've got the Seven of Cups and the Six of Swords. Um, so the Seven of Cups is coming out underneath the Star card. So, okay, I'm starting to see exactly. there. And then the Six of Swords is like um, coming underneath this one. And these all in the reverse. Okay, so the Six of Swords in the reverse is saying... Um, there is no moving on to something bigger and better, right? I'd rather stay here where I am. There's nothing better out there. And they're saying that because you're, you're thinking there aren't any options. Or maybe, again, if this is the, the energy of whoever is coming in to express their love to you, you don't want their attention. You want the attention of someone else because of this hand creeping up her side here. But you think there's no chance for it. Um, or maybe this other person is taken, and so because of that, the options that are coming in are not the options that you want. And so you feel like maybe there's no moving forward onto something bigger and better. And now we have one card that didn't want to come out. We've got the Knight of Pentacles sitting under the Four of Wands. So it could be... Okay, so the Knight of Pentacles is really energy of taking your time with something so that you do it right the first time and do not have to go back and correct any mistakes, right? So, um, and this is coming in in the immediate future. So if you start getting invitations or whatever, take your time with them. Or if you start, or if you start getting, um, oh, yeah. There we go. See, they're just popping out. And now we have the sun coming under. So two tens coming together. The sun coming under the ten of wands. Um, I feel like you don't have any reason to be worried. Even if you're the person who's who is not who's receiving some sort of declaration of love from someone that you're not completely interested in and you're like well man should i take this because i don't have any other options i feel like no you should not because you do have other options you just have to take your time and get to know each person like even though you don't like the actual date itself because of the small talk attached to it or whatever it is that's attached to it, the nerves that gets attached to it, go out on these dates anyway and take your time with them to get to know the people anyway because that's the only way that you're going to find this, this, um, this energy, which is what you really want right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, get into some charms now. So let me get this cleaned up. We have Ario Speedwagon, uh, Keep On Loving You, playing in the background. I know. <laughs> Okay, so how I read my charms, I read them like a transit chart because I happen to be an astrologer as well as a tarot reader. 
and I do have another another channel for that if you're interested on right here on YouTube called Kiss My Astrology. So what we're going to do, we're going to read this like a transit chart. Anything that falls within the uh, board itself is going to be within the week. If it falls within the outer circle being this green circle here, this is going to be a couple of weeks to a month. Anything this on this edge or further out will be a couple of months to a year. We have each of the signs on the outer ring, and then we have the planet that is associated with each sign, the modality, the element, and the flower of life in the center. If the charms fall in the center, it is a general reading for everyone. Um, if they fall in a specific sign, that is a, a special message for that sign. Okay, hopefully I find that well enough with these mitts well. Ooh, we had some fly. Okay, so let me get these pushed up so that I know who they go to. All right. So we're going to start, well, we don't actually have anything in the center. So there's, well, we, we kind of have the bat. So maybe specifically for Aries, you're going to want to pay attention and listen very carefully to everything that is um, said, especially if it is creative ideas or work, because this is falling on top of the fire element in your chart. So anything creative, any ideas that anyone brings to you or tries to help you with, you're really going to want to pay attention to that because it's going to help you navigate um, to the best of your ability this week or, you know, when whenever you see this uh reading. And so that's also a general reading for everyone, but like I said, specifically to Aries. Uh, we also have the $20 bill here that is straddling both Aries and Pisces. So there could be a money issue between the two. Um, because the $20 bill is upside down, this could be an expense. Um, and then we have strong is beautiful in your outer ring. So within a couple of months, you're going um, to, I think you're going to be recognized for your strength strength, especially if it has to do with whatever this situation is and your creative abilities, like paying attention to all of the creative solutions that are out there for you. So for Taurus, we do have nothing, we have nothing for this week, but we do have the love uh, charm here. So I think you're going to receive a message of love within the next month. And then you do have the Pisces charm that is straddling both Taurus and Gemini. So there could be a message of love coming from a Pisces to a Taurus um, and, and or to a Gemini. But I think this is more a message of love coming from a Pisces to a Taurus. And then if we move to Gemini, Gemini could be dealing with a Pisces um, and it could be an issue that has to do with loyalty because we have the dog here where maybe it's Gemini being loyal to the Pisces in some way. Um, and then we do have the sun in the outer ring here for Gemini. So there's uh, some sort of, it's actually, this particular charm is, is actually the sun and moon. And so it's about balance between masculine and feminine. Um, interesting. And it could also involve a Taurus. We don't have anything for Cancer this week. For Leo, we have the, uh, what, this is what I call the sun within a compass. So this has to do with gaining clarity over your purpose. Um, and that was uh, sitting over the fixed element. So this is uh, long-term security, you know, how, how you will gain some sort of long-term security. And then we do have straddling both Cancer and Pisces, the baby baby carriage in the outer ring. So you, if you are a Cancer dealing with a Leo or a Leo dealing with a Cancer, there could be a baby coming within the next couple of months to a year. Um, and then we do have just in, for Leo, we have the angel sitting in the outer ring right next to that baby carriage. So, um, you know, this could be a baby who is a, an angel. Um, this could be a, a baby that is named angel uh, it could be a baby that seems like a blessing. Uh, we do have the butterfly with the $50 bill in the outer ring here for Leo. And the $50 bill is also straddling Virgo. So we need to remember that in a minute. So 
again, when we come back to your gaining clarity over your purpose, there's some sort of, you have to, there's some sort of transformation coming in financially, like maybe one thing has to end or change in order to bring in this money and abundance, especially if you're trying to have a baby with all of this baby carriage and um, angel energy sitting, you know, several months to a year out. And then again, the money, this $50 bill is straddling both Leo and Virgo, and it is in the upright. So this is abundance coming in for Virgo. Um, now it is attached to the moon in the outer ring and we do have this, uh, the double one domino. So the number one, the number 11 or the number two could be important for Virgo, um, in the next month. But you know, this is the, what I call the good night moon moon. He kind of looks like, you know, he's going to bed, right? Not the, not the actual story. There's another one that I think corresponds more to the story, but this one, he looks like he's going to sleep for the night. So maybe you're putting something to bed um, in terms of either a partnership or something within the within the next month. And um, there's definite communication attached to it um, because of the bird. Like, I think whatever this communication is, you can trust it because it's coming in on top of the earth element. So that means it's solid, secure, and stable. So you can trust it. Okay, so for Libra, we have the dinosaur. And then we have the Sagittarius charm in your outer ring. And we have uh, the number 10 domino. Uh, sitting over the air element. So for Libra, the number six, the number four, the number 64, or the number 10 is going to be important in some way. Tens are also new beginnings, and that is sitting over the air element. So there could be like some sort of communication that you need to have with a Sagittarius that will bring about a new beginning or some sort of f luck or fortune. Um, with the dinosaur attached to it, it, it could be like, something to do with kids, but it doesn't have to be like dinosaurs are ancient primal energy. But I have to say this particular dinosaur is one of the more tame, gentle dinosaurs. Like they're, um, they, I think they were plant eaters, so they weren't even predators. So whatever this long-term like ancient ancestral energy is, it's benevolent or positive, right? Um, there's no fear attached to it. Um, it could be like a long-term situation that has to do with your kids. What's the, the, for, uh, the, uh, new beginning or the fortune of your kids, but it, it's a conversation that needs to be had with the Sagittarius. Okay. So there's nothing for Scorpio. If we go over to Sagittarius, we have the mushroom. So for Sagittarius, I feel like you are, I feel like it's saying dream big this week. Um, like mushrooms carry a couple of connotations, right? Like they can be hallucinogens. They kind of remind me of like Alice in Wonderland and the Cheshire Cat. Um, so there could be like some deception attached because there's a fantasy element, to, you know, attached to a mushroom. But mushrooms are also very nutritious and healthy and they're a food source as well as, you know, a source like... Um, in some traditions, uh, cooking traditions, there's a term called umami, which means, you know, flavor, and that's a flavor that comes from the mushroom. So there's some sort of flavor attached to your situation. So I feel like it's saying like, dream big, fantasize, um, but don't let their, like there, you can add some flavor to whatever your story or your situation is, but don't lie. Especially if you are dealing with a Libra like, you know, and it has to do with kids or something, like, don't lie. Anyway, so for Capricorn, you have the car sitting in the outer edge, and then you have the floral moon in the outer ring. So the floral moon, just it to me, that's like feeling good emotionally, just because it's just such a pretty decorative moon, right? Like it's something you would put on your wall to make things look pretty and feel good, right? So that's what I, I kind of feel like within a month you're going to be feeling really good. But I do think there is either travel or something, some issue with a car. Um, now this can be travel. Maybe if you're going on vacation, it can make you feel really good. 
Um, or maybe um, that's what this car is talking about, like movement. Maybe you're in a situation where you're not feeling so good right now, but there's like something where there's going to be movement attached to change that situation where you're, you'll be feeling pretty good within a month. And it could be attached to a trip that you have to take. Okay, so for Aquarius, you have the dress. Um, it is upside down, so um, I don't know. I don't normally read the dress upside down, but this time I feel like it's saying you don't need to worry so much about your appearance. I don't know. What, how, take that however that resonates. We have the feather for Pisces, and then we have the lighthouse. But the lighthouse, it's not you know standing upright, and really the chances of the lighthouse falling where it's going to stand upright are pretty slim. But I do kind of feel like I feel like with it laying down like that, this $20 bill that's straddling your house and the house of Aries is in the reverse. So that's like expenses, right? Or bills. And then the, with, if the lighthouse was to fall over, of course the light would go out, which means it can't really be a, a beacon for anyone. And so then you've got this feather over here, which is like angelic energy. So there's some sort of faith attached to this situation. Um, there could also be like health issues attached to this. Like maybe if you're not paying attention to your health, like you could, if you're trying to be a light for others and a beacon to show others the way, how are, you know, if you're not, if you're not replenishing yourself and that light goes out, well, that's, that's an expense, right? That's a, that's a drain on your abundance, right? And so, um, But I don't know why I feel like this is a health issue. I'm not, I can't get over to, I don't know why this, there's nothing here to even speak of health. And yet I feel like there's something about health issues that are costing a lot of money and you're praying, like you're having to really pray, like you're worried about finances. And it's so weird that it's coming up like that because there's no, like, I'm just seeing that and I don't want to make anybody scared. Like, oh my God, am I going to get sick? And am I going to have like medical bills? I don't want, I hate those kind of readings. I hate when other readers do those readings. And yet that's the only thing that's there. And so I don't know. I, I feel like I have to leave it there. I feel like maybe that's saying this is what you're dealing with. And, and the other thing about the angel feather though, you know, really when it's talking about, that's like, a, that reminds me of like prayer, right? So if you are praying about the situation, if that's like the advice to pray about the situation, another piece of advice could be to reach out for support. Don't try to do this on your own, especially if this is a health issue where you're having money concerns alongside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this here so that we can move right into the last reading because this video is like almost two hours long already and I'm not sure if I'm gonna well I don't really want to edit much out of it anyway so this is gonna be a pretty long one well, let's get into this and I have to say also for Pisces just because this is the last song playing we do have um, kryptonite by three doors down playing in the background and so this is where he's talking about you know um, um, if I go crazy, would you still call me Superman? So if Pisces is trying to do too much and their health is taking a hit because of it, you need to stop, all right? So now we're gonna go ahead and move into group number four. Let's show you a close-up of your card as soon as I get this situated back where it needs to be. So we have a good, clear picture. All right. So here is your focus card, the beloved. Feels like she's getting special information from spirit with the way that crow is, has, you know, um, he's burrowed underneath the veil. He's gone, he's gone, you know, over or past the veil in some way. He's found a way to cross the veil in order to give her a kiss of information. Now, the reason that that's important is because right now in the astrology, um, especially with the uh, eclipse and new moon on April the 30th, uh, the veil is very thin. This is the perfect time between now and the eclipse in uh, the the uh, full moon in Scorpio in May, May the 15th, which is another eclipse. Um, the energy is just perfect for reaching out to loved ones, doing spiritual work, trying to contact 
those who have passed over mediumship. And so I do feel like this is particularly speaking to that with this. This raven has gone out of his way to go beyond this veil in order to give her a kiss, which means there is some sort of special message coming for you. And if it's not coming in this particular reading, this is your advice to try and reach out. So let's go ahead and get some crystals to see which ones you need to work with. We do have Bulletproof by Godsmack playing in the background. Oh, I've got to be careful how I'm shuffling and how close because I don't want my... I set this up specifically because I really felt that we needed the energy of these particular tools here for this reading. And so I need to be very careful. And I apologize if you're one of those people who likes to watch the shuffling. I just don't want my, my setup here to get too wonky. And as you can see, every time I shuffle too hard, it blows everything and the... the the flames on the candles start to flicker and we don't want that. So I have to shuffle off camera and I apologize for that. So if this is where you want to reach out to someone that maybe you had a little bit of a difficult relationship with, I'm only saying that because of the song playing in the background. Oh, interesting. We immediately have Chrysocolla, so I'm going to set that over here and look at the, it says silence. The key word for this card is silence. So Chrysocolla is definitely one of the stones that you need to be working with. But I think this is saying you absolutely need to get to the point where you can sit in silence. Okay, let's see what else they want to bring out. Just because I wanted to get a couple of crystals for this side. Uh, like I say, I do feel very strongly this here is the crystal you need to be working with. So again, I'm going to hold this up. I want you to get a good picture of the sigil here. So this particular sigil in the center, you can take that sigil and you can draw it anywhere and on anything, including yourself being, if you want to bring in the energy of Chrysocolla, you would draw that sigil here in the palm of your hand where you have chakras. Um, you can draw it anywhere. As I said, you can draw it on your tools. Like I could draw it on this if I wanted to. You can, you know, uh, draw it on a piece of paper with your intentions written out, what it is that you're trying to manifest, however you feel most comfortable. All right, so now we have uh, Carrie Underwood Before He Cheats playing in the background. And again, just for those, just in case you don't know, um, when I call out this, the songs and the artists, that is for you to Google. If you don't already know the song or the words, um, that does not mean that the entire song or every lyric is going to be pertinent to the reading or you. It could be a, a it could be the name of the song. It could be the artist um, her, themselves, or it could be a. The, the chorus or something specific about the song, okay? The one specific thing that attaches to the reading. All right, so now we have black tourmaline with protection. And then we have rhodonite on the bottom of the deck with patience. So this completely ties into the silence that is called for in Chrysocolla. And I just realized, look at the coloring between the black tourmaline card and the rhodonite card is so very similar. Okay, 
So you need to keep still, you need to be patient, you need to keep silent in order to receive this message that you are looking to receive. Possibly this is some sort of question that you have about a relationship or a person that has been difficult in some way in your life where they've maybe treated you in such a way where you've felt the need to fight back, get stronger or something in some way. You feel cheated by this person, whether this is a romantic situation or not. That It does not have to be a romantic situation. There's just this sense of feeling cheated. So let's see what's going on in your head. We're going to get five total, but we're starting off with the Queen of Swords, the Judgment card, and the Seven of Pentacles. So the Seven of Pentacles is going to be the main energy of what's in your head right now, and it's an, a card that talks about being impatient. I can't wait. I can't wait. I need to know. I need the answers right now. And the reason that that's so interesting is because Rhodonite talks about having patience, and you need to keep still with this Cressicola so that you can receive the message. Maybe you don't want to, obviously, because of the Seven of Pentacles. You don't want to wait. You want it now, now, now. I want to know <laughs> why. What's so important that you need to know now? But what's this? Okay, hold on. Now we've got the Four of Pentacles. Interesting that that Four of Pentacles, the imagery in it looks almost like it kind of connects to this Seven of Pentacles here. So uh, whatever this is that you're like impatient for, you're 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 not willing to let it go, basically. You're not, I feel like you're not willing to compromise on it either, either. So you're looking for answers in a situation where you're not willing to compromise. You're not willing to let the situation go, possibly because you feel cheated. Um, you feel as if this person has treated you in a bad way. And so, but what is this information that you want? I don't understand. Let's get one more card. Because whatever this is, so far you look like you're ready to fight. Maybe that's why you need to keep silent. I don't know. Is that a card that's turned over? It is. I didn't even see that. So that's the mother or the maiden of fire. So this is the um, uh, the page of wands. So pages are typically messengers. And you see how she's carrying that candle close to her heart. So whatever this message is, it's a heartfelt message. Maybe that's what you're impatient for is a heartfelt message from someone that you feel wronged you in some way. And then look, you've got the three of swords on the bottom of the deck. So whatever, and, and she's also, this card, I always feel like she's look, looking into a crystal ball, like um, looking for answers. So again, this kind of ties into trying to receive a message from the great beyond, right? Maybe this is a loved one who's passed on that you're trying to receive a message from. Again, like I, I can't get over this feeling of, and I want to put this right here. I can't get over this feeling of like this person may have treated you poorly or treated you in such a way that, um, you felt like you had to be stronger because of it. And so I don't know why you're still waiting for this message from them. Maybe, I, I don't know. Let's see what's going to happen because like you don't want to let this go, right? There's this, I'm holding on to pain, chaos, because look at this mother of air, by the way. And the queen of swords is somebody who's got a sharp tongue. Um, they, they, you know, if she's in the reverse, she's doing it because she wants to be a bitch. 
But when it's in the upright, the Queen of Swords, she just, she knows that she has to say the hard stuff, even if it hurts. And so maybe this person was someone who had to be hard on you. Like if this was a parent, I got to be honest with you, this really does feel like a parent who was hard on you, but you really want some sort of acknowledgement of love and you're kind of impatient for it in some way. Um, and they're saying be silent in order to hear because I think maybe the messages have been coming through already um, you just you just won't shut up won't shut up sorry I'm saying it that way but that's what's come through um, <laughs> that feels hard too and maybe that's maybe that's something that this person would have said to you is hard stuff like that like would you just shut up and listen for a minute like because I, I mean I don't typically like to talk to people like that it, you know, myself, so it's not something I would typically say. Um, yes. Let's see how this is manifesting and then we'll get some charms. I really do feel like this is something that you need to do in ritual. I can't, I, as much as I want to make this general for as many people might watch it, I cannot get past the imagery. I keep saying I'm an intuitive reader. I always look to the images first before I even try to consider what the traditional meaning of the card is. And when I'm looking at these images, it is just super, super clear to me that this is 100% some sort of ritual to, to, for mediumship. Like, um, and like I said, I, I, you know, I know there are a lot of readers want to make these readings as general as they can so that they will appeal to as many people as they can, but maybe that's not always the best thing. Like maybe this message is only meant to be for a couple of people at the very most, right? And so again, this is saying like, if you're trying to contact someone, especially if this is a parent or something, because you really need this acknowledgement, um, you're, you need to be still. And I feel like their energy is chastising you a little bit and telling you to sit still long enough to hear. I don't know why I'm getting so firm about that, but I feel like it needs to be said like that. Like, sit down and listen. It's time to sit down and listen. Like, no more time for all of the... I don't know, whatever it is that's making you feel like you don't want to let this go. All right. So we've got the lovers on the bottom of the deck. Okay. So the lovers is typically... Um, a card that's about like, well, especially this one, it's talking about a, a decision that needs to be made. They, they look like they're getting ready to either buy this house. So obviously they're going to be moving, right? So there's something going on where, um, maybe this is what you're impatient for. And that's one of the reasons that you want to reach out. Like you're, maybe you're trying to buy a house or something and, Dude, I don't know why, like, oh my God, are you trying to like buy a house and you're asking your deceased ancestors to like help you, but you're impatient and they're saying like, <laughs> we're trying to give you the answer. We're trying to tell you which way to go, but you won't sit down and listen. All right, hold on. We're going to get to that one in a second. I just, I felt like I needed to take it out. Interesting. So it, it came out like I didn't even plan to do that, but I... You know how this one came out with five and then the extra. So this one's going to do the same thing. And so now we have the six of swords. This is, I don't want to, I'm not moving on to better things, right? Or um, there's a delay in, in moving forward. But I don't feel like this is, I don't want to. I feel like this is a delay that's stopping you from doing it again because of this whole, what just came out with this whole impatience and then the whole I'm waiting for an answer of this stuff okay so now we have the five of pentacles so whoever this person was they made you feel rejected and there was like some sort of lack happening like you you may have felt lost quite a bit in the relationship or left out um, and you can see that the the um, 
the elves are trying to tell her which way to go, but she doesn't see, right? There, there's some support. So you did have some support in this relationship, or there was some direction, at least. But it wasn't as easy for you to see, and so you felt rejected and alone and lost. And then we've got the Nine of Cups coming over this, this awakening. So this awakening is, is that you, you are... You are the source of all good things for yourself. In other words, what this is saying is you're waking up to the fact that you, you don't really need this person that you're waiting to hear this message from, whether this is a past on level one or what, or if it's a relationship that ended that you're hoping to hear from. You don't really need that message from them, or you don't need this person's approval or love or whatever in order to, to be happy because you can create your own happiness. That's energy from the recent past as well, by the way. So now in the, the very center where you're very impatient, um, you're impatient for this, right? This is, this is temperance, which is a celebration. But if you look at this imagery, if this is a relationship that you're hoping to hear about, this is, you know, um, you're impatient to hear the news about that. But if it's about a house, you're impatient to be able to settle in and get comfortable. And, you know, this is having a meal, uh, whatever. So you're impatient about bringing this balance in that you want so badly that you're waiting for the answer on. And then we have the Nine of Wands coming over um, the Four of Pentacles. So this is energy of the wounded warrior. This is why you don't want to let this go because you've put in so much work and you've probably like lost a few, you know, strips of flesh in the process because it's been so hard. And then we have the four of wands in the reverse coming out underneath this page of uh, wands. So I'm, I'm so sorry, but I feel like, I feel like what it's saying is that whatever the news is that's coming or whatever the communication or the message or this heartfelt, because pages are messages and this is some sort of passionate heartfelt message, whatever this heartfelt message is that, that you get, like it, you may not really feel like there's cause for celebration. You may not feel very happy afterwards. And because of that, I apologize, but I, I was going to do some charms, but actually because of that, I feel like we need to get another row and find out why. Why is it that you won't be happy? Um, and I think I'm going to get a third deck to answer that one. So we're going to use the TV series to row. We have Sweet Home Alabama playing in the background by... Um, like everybody knows this song, but I don't know the artist. Leonard Skinner. I should know that. <laughs> I don't. I literally feel like it's saying don't celebrate yet when this information, this heartfelt communication comes through. Also, because this is falling right under, underneath the silence card on the right side, um, uh, I feel like you're going to have to really bite your tongue and not say anything when this person comes in to say whatever it is that they have to say to you. Like you, you need to stay silent. Do not respond. Um, but let's see why it is that you will be, oh, hold on. That was all 100% me, and so I'm going to put it back. Um, that was like a slip of the hand, but I, I want to see why you're going to, you won't be too happy or why. It's either that you are not going to be happy when this message comes through or whoever this person is that's coming in to say what they have to say, they're, they are not happy and that's the reason that you have to be silent. But we need to figure out why. Why are they unhappy? So we're going to do a third row that only it's only going to be a um, clarification for these two cards, not the rest of the cards. Just these two to see why are you or the other person unhappy with this communication.
All right. I got one card. We got to get four more. So whatever it is that they have to say is going to break your heart. I can tell you that already just because this is the card in the center. Whatever it is that this person has to say to you is going to, it's going to hurt your feelings or break your heart in some way. It's going to, it's going to, you're going to feel it. And I apologize for that. I am so sorry. Hold on. And one more. All right. All right, and then one last card flipped up right as I was getting ready to put the deck back together. So we're going to put that together with the final card that fell out. And we do have the uh, um, Page of Cups on the bottom of the deck. And so this is emotional message, obviously. Um, You know, he's got this set of headphones on, but he looks like he's talking to somebody. So this could be something that somebody says in a public way um, that actually hurts your feelings. Okay. I, I really do feel like whoever this person is that says whatever they have to say passionately, it's something that was said in a public way that's going to hurt your feelings. And there could be some sort of a deception um, attached to two people, possibly a king of swords and queen of wands. So this would be uh, fire, which would be either Aries, Leo, Sag, and then air, which is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So I feel like this is a couple. There could be some, okay, I feel like there's some sort of information that's coming through about deception that's been perpetrated by a a couple, a married, you know, a couple or a partnership or something. Um, you're going to find out about it because there it's going to be something that like you'll find out about it because it, it'll be public um and i think it's really going to break your heart i feel like you're going to feel deceived and i'm so sorry for that look at back here i think you tried to like stand up for yourself i think you tried to stand up for yourself and um I think that was used against you in some way, and that's the reason that whoever did this this couple, this deception, these two people, there's two people here, an air sign and a fire sign. Um, uh, so the air sign, this king of swords, this person doesn't have to be like Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but this person, if you look at this dude, he, first of all, he looks kind of, he looks like he's a scam artist, right? He looks greasy, like a used car salesman, like he's shysty. He's, he's the type of dude that's going to be a narcissist, that's going to be, you know, he's going to say or do whatever he can to, to manipulate you into doing what he wants, right? He's cold-hearted, whoever this person is. And then this female is a woman who's actually very charming, um, um, attractive, charismatic, fun, fun to be around, active, um, you know, all the good things, intuitive. So whoever these people are, they're working together. One of them is very slick and, you know, manipulative. And the other one is good at charming people. And that's how they work together. And there's this deception attached to it. It could be attached to buying a home. Doesn't have to be. Um, it could be, you know, um, like maybe there's some message about a passed on loved one and um, you have questions that you're trying to go to a medium about and you may get, I feel like there, I feel like if you're going in and you're, you're trying to do a mediumship session to contact a loved one who's passed away because it would be because you already suspect something right here and maybe this person will confirm it for you. Um, like there's some sort of deception that has to do with a couple or something that this, whatever, the, the person will confirm it for you. Or you are waiting for news about either the sale of a house or some sort of situation that's like got you feeling impatient. You, you're, you want to get started on it immediately because you're happy about it. Um, 
but in the midst of it you're going to you're going to hear something publicly that's going to open your eyes to the deception that's going on it's going to really hurt your feelings make you feel betrayed but you are going to need to stay silent regardless of whatever it is if you're trying to contact someone sit down and shut up and listen if you're waiting for news when you hear whatever this is that's going on um stay silent don't react don't react don't say anything do not react this card is here for a reason i don't know why it's saying don't react but you whatever you do do not react um i really feel like it would be to your interest to you know yeah like i said i don't know why and i i don't i feel like we just need to leave the reading here anyway um so i am going to say thank you for watching i hope this was helpful please like share comment subscribe tell your friends whatever you can to help um to help me grow the channel because i am new here uh, if this didn't resonate please stay tuned there may be another reading for you on this channel that does um i don't know i think that's all i i was supposed to say so you guys have a good day